The day has finally come. The PSVR 2 is finally here. And thanks to a confused career, well, I had the opportunity to check it out one day early. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the PSVR 2, what it comes with and what doesn't, how it works, and give you my first impressions after spending several sleepless night hours using it. So well, let's get into it. And here we are with the box, with this shiny, traditional PlayStation white and blue look and some cool new slogans, like cutting edge performance in 4K, HDR and the new generation of VR games. This is by the way the regular box, there's also gonna be a Horizon Call of the Mountain bundle with the game coat inside, but yeah, I went cheap. Editing me, I actually got also the other version because I wanted to be sure that the one arrived in time. And uh, yeah, inside it's exactly the same. So let's keep going. But let's get inside, shall we? Weirdly upside down. And when we open it up, we're gonna find, well, a less premium experience that I was expecting with a little box and two new Sense controllers and the headset itself. In the little box, you're gonna find a USB Type-C cable, a pair of included earbuds and the usual user manual. Let's put it on the side though. This has to be the first VR headset in my memory shipping without any cleaning cloth. And just a bit of advice here, the lenses are super extra fragile, so be sure to never clean them with your t-shirt. Always use a glasses cleaning cloth. But hey, let's free the controllers, fancy and light, and of course, let's take a look at the headset, the PSVR 2 in all its glory. Light, cool, but I'm gonna be honest, it feels a bit cheap. The headset cable is already mounted on, and this time it's just a single USB Type-C cable to connect it to the front of our PS5. Long gone are all the breakout boxes from the first PSVR. Here we have two buttons on the bottom, the power button and the other one for the camera pass-through to see your surrounding anytime. And the one here instead is the microphone. On the top we will find the eye distance button, get your lenses closer or further away from your face, great if you wear glasses, and the manual stepless IPD adjustment wheel to match the position on the lenses to your eyes. More about it in a few. The PSVR 2 has a halo style design strap that can extend pushing the back button, taking the weight completely off from your face. That's why we have this ultra soft rubbery face gasket in front. This feel weightless. The paddings around feel pretty soft and for some reason the back one is crunchy. And putting on the headphones is so cool to see how there is an included holder for the earbuds. Can we compare it a bit with my old PSVR 1? These are for sure very similar in footprint, but yeah, the two feels for sure lighter. And because of that, also cheaper. Spinning it around, you're gonna see the cameras that are gonna be used for the tracking of the head and the controllers. But back to the controllers, luckily long gone are those women toys, things that we had before. And so welcome the new DualSense controllers. They feel light, small, the usual square, triangle, circle and X buttons are very clicky. I really love the PlayStation buttons detailing texture over the grip area, by the way. The cool thing is that the triggers are adaptive, so with little motors inside to react to the games. Though sadly the grip is just a button and I think it's kind of a lost opportunity here. There's no analog input. Wait a minute, I just realized there's just one single USB Type-C cable, but these are two controllers. Overall though, the PSVR 2 is not small, it's not premium, but at least it's light and balanced. It looks pretty cool. But what about the inside the headset? How does it feel to actually wear it? Well, I can tell you right now, it actually feels very, very good. And after connecting into my PS5, I for sure saw a drastic difference from the previous generation, the PSVR 1. I mean, here we have double the resolution, the difference in clarity is massive. If you come from other newer headsets though, well, you will feel at home. With the new HDR OLED displays with the resolution of 2000 and 2040, running up to 120 Hz, the colors really pop and the blacks are surprisingly deep. I mean, they are full blacks, the pixels turned completely off. That's part of the OLED technology. And that's awesome. There's something though that weirdly enough I didn't hear mentioned by anyone. And that's weird because the image feels a bit velvety, like a textile in front of you. And that's something that I experienced before in another OLED headset a long time ago. You see the OLED use pentile pixel arrangement. So they pretty much ditch one subpixel every pixel. And the problem is that this subpixel missing in VR could become pretty 
transparent. So I'm pretty sure that here using this same filter that we're using on the Odyssey Plus from Samsung to actually create a refraction between the pixels in height as much as possible the screen door effect. So the space that there is between the pixels. That though results in a kind of a fuzzy look. And looking back at the official tear down video from Sony, it actually looks like it. I mean, this should be shiny. By the way, I'm on this, be sure to stay tuned on the channel for the classic True Lenses video. I just have to be a kind of a creative because they're not the same games available on every platform, of course, here just yet. But let me know what you think will be good to compare. Anyhow, after this long nerdy parenthesis, when you connect it, you will be prompted with a straightforward and easy to follow setup process. They will keep you by your hands, even a bit too much to explain how to wear it in the best way possible. And that's actually where the cool part comes in, the eye tracking. Because this headset is built in eye tracking to understand the position of your eyes every time. That will be using game to enhance visuals, but also cleverly here to tell you how to wear the headset and how to set your IPD, interpopulary distance in the correct way. You see, this is super important in this headset because we have old generation Fresnel lenses and the sweet spot is not super big. So your eyes really has to sit in the right position, in the center of the lenses. Also during the setup, we get the first view at the pass-through mode that you can trigger anytime with a dedicated button. This is just black and white, but it looks pretty crisp to my eyes. It's not completely 3D accurate as my hands feels and look crazy tiny, but it's great to grab your controllers and check what your dog is chewing anytime. Here you can create a new plane area. It's pretty cool that this actually scan automatically your environment and actually suggest you the guardian boundaries itself and look at those buttons on the floor. It's pretty sweet. Anyhow, after the setup is done, you get on the regular PS dashboard and you can use two controllers to move around and select things. I wish there was a dedicated VR mode, VR dashboard, but it will do. By the way, I play some games and cool thing. If you don't know what to buy yet, there is a list of free demos available to download, including a trial of Call of the Mountain and Resident Evil 8 Village. That is terrifying. And that's in that game that was actually wowed by the colors and contrast of the screens. Also prompt to PlayStation for the face gasket. I forgot how awesome was to be completely immersed in the VR experience without seeing anything outside. Inside is completely black and that's fantastic and a very different approach to what Meta is doing with the Quest Pro, for example. Also, the screens are very bright. I think it's the first time in my VR life that I had to squint for some bright scenes. That is awesome. Beside that, I was expecting a bit more. That suspected filter on front of the screen is kind of a letdown for me, but we'll see it better in my True Lenses video. Everything feels a bit fuzzy, but that might also be due to old Fresnel lenses. They still give some god rays, unfortunately. The FOV though, it's pretty nice. But hey, what about games? So far, I tried Demio. I love that. Kayak VR, awesome graphics, Zenit, the first mod in VR, Cities VR, Cave Diggers 2, Resident Evil Village, and Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy Edge. And some Horizon. Yeah, I didn't sleep much. And the controllers died on me. Twice. I'm charging now. That's because unfortunately the battery life is around four to five hours. Not really great. I wish they were a bit heavier with a bigger battery. I wouldn't have minded. Cold thing though, they seem to work also when connected to the cable. I'm not sure if they are charging actually, and it's not ideal, but they work. About the cable of the headset is around 4.5 meters. That is enough, but nothing crazy. Unfortunately, long extension cables are out of the picture because it gives me error, but I leave a one meter cable extension you can use in the description below. That's pretty great if you wanna use a pulley system. By the way, I'm not bothered having a cable if that means having a better visual clarity. Just a little tip, always face the opposite way of your PS5 and your TV for two main reasons. One, you're not gonna have the cable in front of you all the time dripping on it. And the second is that the camera are not gonna get confused with the tracking with the images there are on the TV or the reflection of it. Because yeah, here we have an inside out tracking. So we use these cameras to actually track the head and the controllers and we don't need any external sensors. Testing it in games, I had some hiccups, but it's not the worst nor the best I used so far. It just gets a bit confused when getting too close with the controllers to the headset. Kind of snap there. 
By the way, this is becoming a review, isn't it? So, well, what do I think about it? If you come from the previous generation or if you get VR for the first time with it, for sure it has a big wow factor. It's pretty comfy so far, the screens are plenty bright, even too much, and it has some awesome colors. The resolution is also pretty good, I mean miles from the previous generation. I'm a bit of a VR enthusiast though, so I may sound a bit pragmatical, but I'm very happy with what I'm seeing, but I didn't see this big generational jump from what we have right now. You see, there are not many games available just yet, granted it just launched and it didn't try GT7 just yet, but I'm getting ready for it. And personally, I played most of the games that are out there on different platforms, and to be honest, it didn't feel that dissimilar. Resident Evil 8, for example, looked better on my PC with a mod made by a single person than on PSVR 2. But yeah, of course, on PSVR 2 it feels more native for interactions and the game itself. So far though, it gives me big hopes for the future and I can't wait to try it more in depth and tell you about all the cool features like the eye tracking in a consumer headset. That is just awesome. And of course the sense controllers that they really add to the games with adaptive triggers. I'm just a bit salty about the grip button that feels like an unwelcome shortcoming here. Everything's capacitive though, so it understands the position of your hand even if you don't click on the button. And that's good for immersion. But hey, I'm going too long. Here we have it. These are my first impressions of the PSVR 2 that just launched after way too many continuous hours using it. So of course, expect so much more content about it soon. But yeah, what do you think about it? Did you pre it already? Do you see the filter as well if you have it in your hands? Let me know in the comment below. And I'm now ready to go to sleep. Finally, because I'm destroyed and my right eye hurts. But of course, stay tuned of the channel for the True Lenses video, the comparison with Quest 2, and many more other videos about it. So, as always, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like this, like. Subscribe to the channel for more of your tech. If you really love the channel, the join button on there. Little down further, also the Patreon. Thanks to all the opinions and join the channel, of course. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.